the Shepherd Shofar International Harvester Ministries is called to blow a trumpet in Zion, calling people from every nation to come and receive mercy and grace at the foot of the cross. The King is coming. family uh, a lot of what we're teaching now they didn't talk about Amen. you know no no indictment on any dom- denomination but the denomination that we went to they never talked about eternal things like the church has come into now so it's not something I'm teaching the rapture I didn't learn about the rapture to 1976. That's when I, I became born again. And now I went to church before then. What you laughing at? <laughs> well, I, well, praise the Lord. I didn't hear that. I wonder why she's laughing, because that's when I was born again, 76. And, um, but I went, to, uh, I went from being from a traditional uh, denomination uh, into Pentecostalism, and the, f- the first thing that just floored me was this teaching on the rapture. I was a was and I still am a student of the Word of God. I probably, like the Apostle Paul, taught some things more nobly than some. And when I say, like, more than some, because Whatever I tend to get a hold of, if, it's, if it seems true, I ravish it. And, you know, everybody was, everybody was teaching, uh, teaching the, the rapture in the Pentecostal circles, but not in the, the traditional circles that I had come from. Nobody was talking about that. They talk about you die, you, you go to heaven or hell. But this thing about the rapture was brand new, especially for somebody coming out of the, the streets and the, the drug culture that I came out from. So I latched on to it. Everybody shouted about it. We, we had rapture drills, et cetera, every Sunday night, and they were foundation to what I believe. Then I started to study the other parts of the doctrine, and some things... I had questions on. However, there is such an onslaught of teaching certain things. I'll give you an example. I went to a church where they didn't believe in the laying on of hands, but yet it was in the Bible. So the teaching of the rapture has nothing to do with salvation, but it's one of those doctrines to where some, some groups believe and some groups don't believe. The group I went to, my father got kicked out of the church. It was a Baptist church. He got kicked out of the church for laying hands on people on Sunday night. I mean, they rolled their eyes at him. Now today, if you saw that in any Baptist church or Methodist church or uh, Nazarene church, someone laying hands on someone, it wouldn't bother you. But in 1976, it, it was an issue. That oil that we got sitting out here now, you see it, and you don't pay any attention to it. This young lady brought me some vials to fill. If you had brought oil in our church, they would have asked you, what are you watching, A.A. Allen or somebody? Have you lost your mind? So see, even though it was okay, and now everybody's got vials of oil, and every church has got uh, uh, olive oil, you know. But back then... If you had had olive oil and you put it out, they would have swore it was witchcraft. So what we have to understand is that there are periods that things that are hidden right in the Bible, people don't believe. 
And that's still folk today don't believe in the laying on of hands. Speaking in tongues. People are still struggling about speaking in tongues. It's 2021. It's, it's 21, right? 21. Yeah. And people are still struggling. You know, I think of 22. But people are still struggling about that, and it's right there in the Bible. There's people, I don't believe it. Uh, or I believe it, but it ain't for me. Or they have the wrong concepts about all the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, it's in the Bible, but, you know, it's people right here in this room. You've got gifts, and, and the proof that we don't believe it is that we haven't yet received it. You can assent to say, I believe it, but when, when we know that something is really our gift, we go for it in a passion. Certain things, when we know it's true, we don't care who believes because belief is singular between you and God, not you in a church, not you and your mom and them, not you in this whole denomination. And it's real easy to go for a long time believing something that will hold water or won't hold water. That being said, with the rapture, uh, I think it's something that we need to examine with an open mind. You know, we come to Bible class a lot of time, and we already yawning, got a yawn on. We know the pastor, we heard his sermon, we can finish his but I think that as we study the word of God, we should find out that God is inexhaustible. And there are things that we might think we know that we really don't know. And that's from the dude that's preaching it to the people that's receiving it or the woman that's preaching. It doesn't matter. The apostle Paul was putting people to death and he thought he was doing the right thing till he ran into Jesus. So I stand with you on that. I'm a pre, a pre tribulation a rapture kind of a person, that's what I want to believe. But I'm going to ask you to act like you had never heard it because I believe if you give me just a little time here, I believe that I'm going to give you something at least to whet your spiritual appetite might make you want to start reading some more. You know, I believe that we get stuck and don't read and study because we think we've exhausted a subject. I do. I love the Word of God. But there are times when I struggle to get something. And I'm not looking for something new and something weird and something crazy. But the Holy Spirit has to, to, has to remind me that you don't know everything about that particular subject. And then he'll, he'll stir me up. And then I want to study and I research. And I may spend hours just in the room studying and getting books and studying. I'm not doing it to prove that I'm so intellectual because I'm not. I'm doing it because I'm one of the dumbest people. And I'm not saying that, you know, to be facetious, one of the dumbest people at getting spiritual truth. But I know how you get it. I don't get it quick because I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I know how you get it. And, and, and it, it ain't that that's the problem. It's the want to. If I don't have that desire, zeal. Some had zeal, but not according to the word of the Lord. And that's the only thing that any of us in this room, if you don't have a passion with your Bible and with study material, the only problem is it ain't got to do with intellect because we see not many wise among us. Not many. If some people are. But when you lose your desire... Is when the book is just, you pick it up, you don't even know where it is before church. You're looking for it. You left it over your mama's house. Left it, left it in the back seat of the car. Because you've lost your zeal for the word. I've been there. You know, pick it up and, and look at it. And it's just a stone. It's just a stone. This right here was just a stone to Israel when the Lord wanted them to know this is our marriage covenant. This is a marriage contract. Between the Lord and Israel. This was the contract. This was the, the nuptials. This was the vows. They broke the vows. He, he, didn't, he didn't write them up a contract stamped by the city magistrate. This was it. They broke it. Because this to them was stone. It wasn't living. He wanted them to be passionate about thou shall have no other gods before me. They started building golden calves soon as the man of God turned his back. You know, it's like your man or woman, as soon as you walk out the house, they dial in one, two, three, find a, find a person. And he wanted them to be passionate about these vows. Now, we look at them and say, oh, ain't nobody keep them. But the Lord wanted them to put them, he says, as frontlet before your eyes. So when you go, when you look to the left, you see them. When you look to the right, he wanted them to, 
care much about this as you do your spouse. You paid, you laid down a twenty dollars for a, a ring. You, you want to wear that ring? A hundred dollars. But they didn't want that because their heart was stone. See, and when your heart is stone, you can't be interested in the word. So we got to check our heart. That's what the problem is. So first of all, I'm going to ask you, open your heart here and just go with me. And let's just act like we don't know it all. Because I'm going to tell you that I laid down some understanding to go with the masses. And anybody know me, I don't, I don't like going with the crowd just for the sake of going with the crowd. But I believe that God, for, for a reason, has allowed some light to, to, to challenge me. And I'm going to challenge you. We need to be like the Bereans. Let's look there real quick at Acts. Now, this don't have anything to do with your salvation, so don't get mad at me if you disagree. Because, see, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawyer in the courtroom. I'm going to try to convince you of what I see. <laughs> if I knew the law, you would want me to represent you before they put you in jail. Because I'm going to go down with you. That's who Jesus is. Well, I wish you had known me and I had my degree. I was, I'm going I'm to say, you can't handle the truth. Tell the judge, you know. We both going to be locked up together. But look at here. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 10. This is, this is what the Lord wants from us. He says, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, to, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble these uh, Bereans, they were more noble. Uh, they were, they were well-born. They were courteous. They were a better disposition. They were polished. Uh, they acted like they had education. And in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures uh, daily whether those things were so. Now, I don't want you. God doesn't want you. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, he wants us to receive the word of God with readiness, but don't just receive the word of men with readiness. Yes, we are men. God uses men. He has chosen it through the foolishness of preaching to save men. So, you know, when the world says, I don't need a preacher, uh, whatever their line, God says, how shall they hear without a preacher or without a witness or someone? When you're witnessing, you're being a preacher. You're doing the same thing I'm doing here now. But it, not only do we have to have a readiness of mind, I don't want to come in here and preach a message and you sit here hard and don't want to receive a readiness of mind. Nobody wants to prepare a message from the Lord and deal with a stiff-necked, stubborn crowd like Jeremiah them deal with, Amen. dealt with. Amen. We want to deal with the people who are ready in their mind. But ready comes because they'll spend time with the Lord. They can weigh it out in their spirit. And, you know, some things, even if it's the rapture, you can say, well, I may not agree on all of that, but look at what it says. It says, but they searched the scriptures, not when the preacher was there, they started having their own Bible study. They searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were. See, we live in a time now, if people don't agree with you, they just go to church across town. They tell you, well, my mama believed this way. My daddy didn't believe. They taught me this way. This is where I learned. This is where I just believe, you know. And, hey, I've been there, done it too. But I have done it in, in my nearly 50 years of ministry ignorantly too. Hello. Have done it ignorantly too. You, I don't care what you say. I believe this. And then the Holy Spirit get me somewhere and say, uh, wait a minute. So when he says out of the mouth of babes, he's not just saying anybody can check you. But what he's trying to tell you that even a child, if he's heard my word, is still my word and it's true. A drunk, yeah, I ain't got to judge him for his sin. But if he catch me sinning, he can say, thou shall not, brother. And I can't say you can't tell me nothing because you're drunk. I can smell the liquor on you. It's the word of God. And that's how we do. You can't tell me nothing. You drunk and you doing this and that. But if he, if he sees you sin, he say, well, isn't that sin, sir? And if he says, well, it's the word of the Lord. So we're all under God's word. But what religion does, it draws lines and it tells us our belief says it's on the wall. This is what we believe. We can't go no further. 
our headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee, in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, in uh, all the cities where the headquarter building is in uh, Florida, Missouri. It's a, this is what we believe. This is, this is how you be one of us. To be part of Shepherd's Fold, this is what you got to believe. But that's not how the Bible is set up. Amen. Now, there's some things that we cannot disagree on, and that's how we get saved. The blood of Jesus Christ. But there's some things we can disagree on and still love each other and, and go to heaven. And so that's briefly what I want to kind of share with you tonight. Because what I'm going to talk to you tonight, most of us in here probably don't agree with it right now. But we be like the Bereans, we just study because I believe it's that important. See, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is so important that I just don't think that we, and, and I'm going to talk a, a, a little bit about Americans, I just think the Americans don't get it. Amen. I'm an American, but I just don't think we don't get it. And we'll see here in a minute. But they examined what they heard. And uh, the question would be, when you hear the, the preachers teaching on Sundays, even at 10 o'clock, it's not just me, because I know I'm all over the place sometimes, but do you go and search? Do you not get at least one thing that you should, we should go home and search? I don't expect you to stay with me all the rabbit trails I'll be on or anybody else because we all get on rabbit trails. But there ought to be one thing that you can say, uh-oh, boy, that truth, let me check it out. Yeah. yeah. Or it ought to spark you to say, that. I didn't know that. Man, if you know everything, all the time what the preacher's saying, then the preacher needs to come on up. The truth. And we shouldn't be intimidated by that. Amen. But you should never feel like you know everything the word has to say. Because there are doctrines that are so deep and we could miss it. You don't have to believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. But you need to believe and live in a such a way that whenever it comes, come you're ready. Amen. But. You can't afford to take the attitude that a lot of people say, oh, pre-tribulation, pre -tribulation, I don't care, that's when Jesus comes. You keep living like that. You keep living like that. You don't do that on the first about your check. You, you looking out that door, you know, when we get the paper check, looking at that male man, he late. It's, it's nine, nine, ten. He, he late, be wobbling, he late. You know what I'm saying? You care. You don't do that about your bank account when they say they're going to put that $500 in that they took out that they shouldn't have took. You right, you Johnny on the spot. You call them Monday, Monday morning. Hey, listen, y'all overdraft. Y'all said it's going to bring. When does it come? I'm checking my account. It ain't there. You know, anything else. They double charge you on your card. No, you ain't just all, oh, we'll, it'll catch up on us in the rapture. You call and you say, I want that $597. I want it today. You know what I'm saying? So, but when it comes to the rapture and the coming of the Lord and eternal things, because we don't want to get stressed out thinking about it, we play this patty cake with it. Oh, oh, that don't matter. I just know God got me, got me, he got me. Okay. But I'm going to show you something. That attitude is going to get you got. And that's one of the biggest tricks that the enemy is playing to get us to take that attitude that no matter what happens, he got me. No. If that's the case, why are so many people struggling in their face? And I'm going to bring it up COVID. Man, all you got to do is say somebody got the Delta and folk get nervous. Because fear. But we should be ready. The Bible told us to be ready for these things, not with disinfectant, but with the blood of Jesus. But we still don't get it about the blood of Jesus. We still think that's a religious thing that we use on Sunday morning. We, we just don't get it that it coming out of our mouth. I don't care. He said, if you eat, drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. But we still, we don't get it. These signs shall follow them that believe if they drink any deadly thing. So that means if you eat any deadly thing. And it really means that if you get around, you got the cold, but it don't mean you're a sinner. But I'm saying, because somebody put the word pandemic, it can rock your world, man. Folk is ready to go back underground now and start hiding in caves again. And we've been hollering about the blood of Jesus since the COVID started. 
You, you use the blood of Jesus like you use Pepsi then to brush your teeth. The commercial was, you wonder what. Just, just. Hey, they only they must have televised that only in St. Louis. <laughs> That's why we didn't have yellow teeth. <laughs> Whatever, y'all stop. Let me stay with the word. <laughs> but the blood is what covers us. We have to continue to grow in faith, y'all. We have to continue to grow in our faith, and, and people are plateaued in their faith. Christian believers are plateaued, and maybe the Lord will give us light and show you. Help me, Jesus, here. But the Bereans, they received Silas and Timothy after Paul left for further instructions. Listen, I got to thinking, you know, different ones get the COVID. I said, Lord, if I got the COVID, I guess they're going to just shut the church down. Because people are, yeah, people shaking their head, no. But what, what will go on is that if pastor got it, everybody must got it. Like I touch and lay hands on everybody here every time I see y'all, is greet y'all with holy kisses. Most of the time, I'm the least person to touch or be around anybody because I'm either running, coming, whatever. Y'all be more closer to one another than I do. But I'm just saying it's how fear will get you. You think, oh, pastor got it. If that got outside these four walls, pastor, the pastor over there got it. And then somebody says, well, I sure ain't coming because they ain't got no Silas and Timothys that can hang on because, you know, if the pastor got it, they all shook up. You, you know, the, the psyche, how would it be? Let that get out there on Facebook. Yeah, pray for the pastor of that church. He got the COVID. You think people will let, I want to go. I heard they got a good praise team. I'm headed there this Sunday. They're like, I'm not going over there. If the pastor got it, every last one of them got it. But the Bereans, they were capable of still supporting ministry even though their leaders were being put to death persecuted and carry on but a lot of people can't do that why because they ain't digging in for themselves they hanging on the pastor or some minister or, or some what mama them taught them or some tradition i mean it's just the truth you say you don't worship us but then you don't read your bible unless we get you to open it you just a man like me. Okay. You only open it when you come to church. Some people. They were the poster children on how a person or community responds to Bible teaching, no matter who the teacher is. Amen. You do it when the other teacher is 10 o'clock. You want to drag in? I ain't, I ain't come to fuss now. 10 o'clock, going to drag in on, on them. Me, 11 o'clock, because that's the grand hour. That's the grand hour. 10 o'clock, it's the same word. They may not have the experience I have at doing stupid stuff with it, but it's still the word. Fact about it, they're doing a better job keeping it real. Ain't saying bad words on the air. You know, words that are questionable. <laughs> like what people are looking for, you know, and all that, the most silly. <laughs> yeah. Let that get out in TV land. See how many people say, oh, Lord, he's, he's kind of wild, isn't he? But there are three doctrines, pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip, and most Christians don't know the difference between them. But it's my job to make sure you know them. And if you don't know them, to prompt you, to prod you. Because, listen, I can just come on in and preach, hey, listen, we looking for the post-tribulation rapture, y'all. Come on, y'all. And we all shout, come on, let's turn around and touch three people for the post-tribulation rapture. And folks, yes, yes, I'm with you, preacher. I'm with you. You're going to have one heck of a time in life. You can't do nothing to make it come or not come. But how you prepare for that has everything to do with how you're going to meet your next test and trial. 
Amen. Lord, this is this you're gonna have to help me here. Y'all get excited about the truth. It's like it's like gravy. The word. I get excited about the word. It's just like, man, cooking, man. You just don't throw it together. You just take take time to put it together. But look at uh, Matthew 24, 29 to 31. And we're gonna start right there, rocking your world. Because you're gonna have to do like I have had to do. And I had great teachers, college professors, and I'm not saying that they were wrong. I'm saying that I had to say one thing to get a grade, but this by my soul. I ain't trying to get a grade. I got my, my digits or whatever. So to answer their question, you got to answer a certain way when the rapture going to occur. He ain't listening for no, I believe, what did I tell you? That's what needs to be on the test, Mr. Connolly. But let's look at what Jesus had to say. He says, Starting in uh, verse 20, verse 1 of 24, Jesus went out and departed the temple. Disciples came to him to show him uh, the buildings and the temple. And Jesus said unto them, seeing not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Then the disciples asked him privately in verse 3, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? What shall be the sign of thy coming of in the world? Now, the thing is, and I want you to think about it, use your own self if you have to. Most people don't care about that. They don't know about that. Even if they kind of wrong, they don't know or they don't want to know. How in the world, maybe you got to get my age and start thinking you got less miles in front of you than you got behind you. You can call me old. But how in the world can you sit up and not care about what happens, when it happens? I just don't get it. Or maybe that's why he called me to be passionate about it. But the disciples must have realized that things were about to change. Ask the question, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He wasn't talking about the Jews we Christians, Peter, John, Bartholomew, Paul hadn't come into the picture yet. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Now, you can read all the rest of that later. And we may hit some of it la later. But I want to get over here where Jesus answered in verse 29. And Jesus, if you will read it, he didn't do all the jumping around and trying to explain. Well, now, this is for the Jews. And this for the Gentiles. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was taught a lot of that. Well, no, that's not the church there. That's Israel. That's the church. He was talking to Peter, James, John, Thomas, Bartholomew, you name them, Thaddeus, Matthew. He was talking to them. And he says this immediately, verse 29, after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, that may not sound very convincing because we have been taught to uh, exit Jesus, Jesus' the scripture or to argue or to take out certain things. So I understand. You're talking about somebody who have preached to hundreds, if not thousands, about the rapture. But let's. God bless you. We're so happy that you joined us today in our conversation about the pre-trib, the mid-trib, and the post-trib rapture. Now listen, we're not finished. We're just getting started. So I'm going to ask you to join us next week at the same time, and we're going to talk some more. Uh, we'll be in our second series about the pre-trib, 
the mid-trip and the post-trip rabbit uh, tribulation. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Thank God for it.